They the biggest threat in the West to the Denver Nuggets. Mm. If this Clipper team stay healthy, I wouldn't be surprised if they make it to the NBA Finals. The Los Angeles Clippers are about to break the curse. And this isn't something that we often get to hear when it comes to this team. Clippers six minutes and 10 seconds away from their eighth straight win. No way. The Clippers, to say the least, are not the most successful LA team in the league. They have always been the other LA team when compared to the more successful Lakers, who have 17 banners hanging up in the rafters. And for the Clippers, well, let's say they've never been close to hanging one championship banner. But the Clippers aren't a bad organization. Sure, there were points in history where this team became the butt of many jokes, especially when comparing them to the Lakers. But the Clippers have made huge strides since the 2010s. We we know that the CP3 and Blake Griffin Lob City era was fun and exciting, but was never enough to win a title. Things started to look better in 2019 when the Clippers signed Kawhi Leonard and acquired Paul George, who were both fresh off the best seasons in their NBA careers. The Leonard and George duo turned the Clippers into consistent playoff contenders in 2019. In 2021, they made the Western Conference Finals, only to lose to the Phoenix Suns. This era in Clippers history has been more successful than any other era, but for some reason it is yet to help the team get to the finals. So does that mean that the Clippers no longer have a chance to win the championship? At one point, it actually looked like the window was closing, because Leonard and George aren't exactly youngsters anymore. Westbrook's arrival in 2023 after a rough marriage with the Lakers seemed to be a boost for this team, because the Clippers needed a point guard. But he wasn't the answer. It turned out that another former OKC Thunder player had his eyes on the Clippers. While the Clippers were trying to make sense of what they needed to do to contend for a title, there was turmoil in Philadelphia when James Harden cut ties with the 76ers front office and forced a trade. This allowed the Clippers to land the former MVP and three-time scoring champion. But there were questions about how well he would work with Leonard, George, and Westbrook. Harden controversially called himself a system when he discussed his fitness with the Clippers, claiming that he was not a system player and that he wanted to be an entire system with his scoring and playmaking. His statement was taken out of context and he rubbed people off the wrong way, and it only made him look like a selfish player who thinks that every team's offense should focus on it. Someone that trusts me, that believes in me, that understands me, that I'm just not a, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a system player. I am a system. So when Mr. System started playing for the Clippers, critics and haters saw just how bad and disjointed a team looked whenever Harden, Westbrook, George, and Leonard were all playing together. Harden and Westbrook had played together for two different teams in the past, and neither team won championships. Kawhi and PG-13 also need the ball in their hands as much as the two former MVP guards do, and it was starting to look like one ball was not enough for this stellar cast. The Clippers lost five games in a row and were making it seem like trading for Harden was a mistake. But while haters celebrated, analysts believed that it was too early to call this experiment a failure. But like many different teams, there needed to be a period wherein players had to learn their roles in what's commonly called the feeling out process. The Clippers were indifferent. Leonard, George, Harden, and Westbrook are all capable star players who can carry entire teams. But while the starting five flourished, the bench didn't have much firepower outside of Norman Powell. The Clippers needed one of the starters to take a seat on the bench and play the role of the sixth man. While people were debating on who needed to get bench between Harden and Westbrook, the triple-double king volunteered to take on a smaller role off the bench. The move worked because Harden became the sole facilitator on the starting lineup. Five games after joining his new team, the beard was now able to adjust to the tendencies of his superstar teammates and to the Clippers' offensive systems and sets. Meanwhile, Westbrook flourished in his role as the Energizer Bunny off the bench. Kawhi remained the alpha offensive player on this team, with George not far behind. Harden settled into his role as the third option on offense while taking a huge load off of Leonard and George, who no longer needed to become facilitators. Everyone started understanding their roles, 
with Leonard and George focusing on offense and defense, while Harden focused on setting his teammates up. Meanwhile, Westbrook settled into his role and provided offense and energy together with Powell off the bench. Ty Lue also shortened his rotation, often playing eight players per game so that all of the four stars could get the minutes that they needed. Meanwhile, Ivica Zubac steadily flourished as the sole inside presence of a team that only has one true big man in the rotation. Terrence Mann took over Russ's role as starting guard. His numbers don't jump out, but he has been solid all season long because he can play a good defense and doesn't require the ball in his hands. In short, the role players have been playing their roles solidly and have allowed the stars to shine. The team went on a nine-game winning streak that allowed the Clippers to look like true contenders in the West. Everything started clicking for this team. The starters were doing their thing and the bench players have been incredibly solid. But the Clips will still have to rely on its stars in the long run. And let's just say that the Clippers stars haven't exactly been available or reliable since 2019. Another important factor to look at with this 2023-24 Clippers team and why it's about to break the curse is that the star duo is now healthy. From 2019 to 2023, Kawhi Leonard has only played 161 games. He missed the entire 2021-22 season due to an ACL injury. His injury during the 2023 playoffs was arguably the reason why the Clippers failed to make it past the first round. Meanwhile, Paul George hasn't been a lot healthier than his wingman, playing in only 189 games from 2019 to 2023. Even when the duo was healthy, there were times that they had to sit out because of load management. But all of the rest that they had from the games that they missed since 2019 have started to pay off. The duo has only missed six games the entire 2023 to 24 season. We can probably thank the league's new rules regarding load management and stars sitting out for this, but we can also thank the Clippers training staff for keeping an eye on the health of the team's two best players. Kawhi is still the alpha and omega of this team. Everything starts and ends with him because the Clippers can only go as far as he can take them. He has delivered in what has become one of the most efficient seasons in his legendary NBA career. The Claw has been averaging a career high in field goal percentage. His mid-range game hasn't been there yet, but he has been a dominant finisher inside the paint. Leonard has been averaging nearly 90% in his attempts within three feet of the basket. To give you a perspective, Yanis Antetokounmpo, the most dominant inside finisher in the game, is averaging around 80% within three feet of the basket. Also, Kawhi's true shooting percentage has been off the charts this season. We can credit Leonard's inside dominance to the Clippers' improved spacing and playmaking. With George and Harden both attracting defensive attention, Kawhi can attack the basket at will and dominate smaller and weaker defenders. The eye test also shows that he has been dunking more and more inside the paint, proving that his knees are rock solid. But his willingness to be available and to get back to his Toronto Raptors form has been the key to his efficient season. George has also been efficient with his outside shooting, no longer required to be the team's primary facilitator. He has been focusing more on his own offense while still playing a solid defense on the opposing team's best wings. So while the star's health has allowed them to play at their most efficient level since joining the Clippers, the team's overall makeup is one of the reasons why Kawhi and George have been having solid seasons. Ty Lue's paint first, spray it out offense has worked to give the duo the best looks possible. Leonard has been attacking the paint more as the first option on offense, and whenever he needed to pass the ball out, George and the other shooters would have been there to provide backup. Then again, it's only been the first three months of the regular season. We still have around three months to go before the playoffs start. This would make anyone wonder if the Clippers' current run is actually sustainable. Whenever the Clippers' team is seemingly about to break the curse, things don't always work out for them. No one knows how long this team could sustain its balanced offensive and defensive approach, or if the recent run has only been a flash in the pan. Everything boils down to health. All four of the Clippers' main players are in their 30s. While 33 is the new 27 in the modern day era of the NBA, injuries could still be creeping in the corner, ready to pounce whenever the Clippers start to build some momentum. But the two most important players to look out for are still Leonard and George. 
Role players like Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, or even Bonds Halen could replicate a portion of what George brings to this team. Even Harden could return to his three-time scoring champion version to help bring in the offense if George ends up getting injured. But it would be hard to find someone who could bring the same kind of efficiency and defensive mastery that Kawhi comes with. When Kawhi is healthy, he is arguably a top five player in the NBA. Everything about this team starts and ends with a healthy Leonard. But does a healthy Kawhi Leonard make this run sustainable enough to allow the Clippers to break the championship curse? As it stands, the Clippers are still a few games beneath the Timberwolves, the Nuggets, and the Thunder. They are currently sitting at the fourth spot in the West, and it seems likely that teams like the Mavericks and the Kings are going to challenge them for this spot. But out of all the teams that are currently seated higher than the Clippers, the Nuggets seem to be the only threat in the West because they have, arguably, the league's best player and are still the defending champions. If the Clippers run into some of those teams in the playoffs, the Nuggets are still the biggest threats. Let's not forget about the crazy series that they had in the 2020 bubble. Even if the Clippers were to find a way to make it out of the West and get to the finals for the first time, teams like Celtics, Sixers, and Bucks are still pretty tough to beat in a seven game series. So at this point, it's too early to tell how far the Clippers are going to get this season. The Stars' health will be the redeeming factor moving forward. But from the way that this team has been playing so far, it seems likely that the Clips are going to end with one of the top three seeds in the West and could challenge the Nuggets for Western confidence supremacy.